and welcome to Literary Merit, the show where we tell you what media has value. Spoiler alert, it's all of it. Also, spoiler alert, as always, we're talking about spoilers about everything. I'm Ashley. And I'm Alex. And as usual, I'll start with asking, what's new to you, Alex? Um, well, I just came from meeting my brand new newborn niece for the very first time. That's so exciting! What's her name? Her name is Riley May. Oh! And she's... She's not that small, but the only other baby I've had for a long time in my life was her sister uh, a year and a half ago. (laughs) And she... She's... Riley is smaller than uh, Amelia, and so she seems just so tiny. Yeah, you forget how absolutely tiny newborns actually are. My sister commented, she's like, because she was in the hospital for two days just because they allow you that much time. And it was the last time that she'd be alone with one baby. (laughs) So I was like, okay, I understand wanting to to take all that time. But then she said she saw um, her oldest again. And she's like, it was only two days and she'd grown up so much. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) um but she's they're they're all doing well um it was so she started having contractions at noon on wednesday the Mm -hmm. baby was out of her at 6 45 oh my gosh she it was 45 minutes by the time she got to the hospital by the time uh, to the time the baby came out (laughs) like record speeds it was crazy yeah she's ready to ready to say hi right (laughs) a week early too (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, you had posted that. <laughs> oh, well, that's so exciting. Is yeah, everybody doing good. well? Yes, yes. Uh, it it was very calm there because um, my parents uh, took the older one out to the park today. So it was just mama and baby. Oh, that's nice. Some nice, quiet infant time. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, what have you been up to? Me? Well, gosh, yeah, my life's topsy-turvy. So I started a new job um, just this past week, so that's been an adjustment. It's really, really good, though. Things are going well. I'm happy to be there. Um, but more exciting news, our Nintendo Switch arrived. <laughs> awesome. So we've been playing a lot of Zelda. Yep, yep. And a lot of Mario Kart. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to enjoy the uh, the updated version of Mario Kart. I don't have a Switch, but my friend invited me over to play. Okay. Um, and it was, I, I really enjoyed the, um, what are they called? The con, the Oh, yeah, Joy-Cons. the little Joy-Cons. Yeah, I thought they were going to be, like, really cheap feeling. Well, yeah, they're not. Okay, so you, you're fine playing on them? Because, like, I am... At wit's end with these little things trying to drive up. Well, because I played a lot of Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U. So I'm used to this big, hefty game pad. Okay. And then trying to switch to the tiniest controller Planet Earth has ever seen (laughs) is a big challenge for me. I did most of my Mario Karting on the Wii. So I'm sort of used to the smaller... Oh, you're used to playing on that Wii mode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Yeah. See, I can't. It's so hard for me to play Mario Kart on those weird controllers. Like, just give me a regular. I mean, and like the Wii U is different, but it still sort of f- feels in your hand, similar to like a tr- classic controller. Those Joy Cons cramp my hands. Like, I feel like I'm just gonna like flip the little thing out of my hand. Like, it's horrible like i'm pretty decent at mario kart 8 i was just garbage trying to play on this joy con it's horrible like i'm fine when i switch to playing it on the whole thing um but when we do multiplayer i am garbage it's really frustrating it might have something to do with the fact because the the we have this issue too where it's not sure if it if if you're driving with the motion controls or with well, you can you can do that. You can switch that. You can you can toggle that. You can so turn I've it toggled off? that off. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Because I was playing and I was like just like leaning to the side and I'm like, why does my car keep? Oh. 
Uh, yeah, no, we turned off the motion controls because nope, I am not <laughs> into playing racing games with motion controls. I'm 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 I like motion controls in very few situations. I'm not on the motion control bandwagon. Like there are times when it can be fun and enhance. Like um, a really great way that it's been implemented in Breath of the Wild is for like pinpoint accuracy with. Um, with aiming like your yeah. arrows, you can use you can use the joystick to like get there, and then to just very slightly tweak, you can use the gyroscope, mm-hmm. and that's a pretty good use of it, just for that precision. Uh, but otherwise, I'm not into controlling things with motions. I'll stick to the old fashioned way. Well, that's good that the the new it's a lot more precise because I remember the Wii was really not very precise. <laughs> No. And and the thing is because it's not um with the you oh, know, right. it's just it's a gyroscope. Like, yeah, it's so not like, it's, it's not like the laser or whatever. Yeah, it's not doing actual motion controls like the Wii. It's just a gyroscope. And so that's all fine and dandy. That I can deal with that. And that there are ways they've implemented that that works and are useful, but I don't want to just motion control things for the sake of it. <laughs> I Do don't you have like a favorite that. racer? I Okay, classically, I always play Peach. Yeah. I al- <laughs> like, I always play Peach. But in the new re-release of uh, of Mario Kart 8, you can play as the Inklings from Splatoon. And so I have switched to the green Inkling girl. They're my favorite, too. <laughs> They're so cute. Well, I, I love it because when uh, when you go over the jumps, you know, you can do your little style move in the yeah. air, and they turn into a little squid when they jump, and it's so cute. <laughs> I like the um, the teal inkling boy. Yeah. That one's my oh, favorite. Oh, God, I love classic the inklings. Though, I'm classic, s- though, I like Koopa. Koopa? You're a Koopa player? Yeah. Yeah, Peach is my girl. Uh, ordinarily, but I um I love Splatoon. I love those little squids. I do like Peach's ponytail. Yeah, she looks super cute and stylish. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, it always reminds me of. Did you ever play Paper Mario? I didn't, but I did see uh, other other people play it. Yeah, I I love the sequel, Thousand Year Door. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's just this bit because she's of course kidnapped as always. Um, but you play as her, which is a lot of fun. She's yeah. like on this moon base, and you she can like go and like have a shower. Um, and so she like you know closes the curtain and it's like, Psh-sh-sh-sh. and then she comes out and um, when she gets out of the shower, her hair is up in a ponytail. Uh-huh. And I just thought it was so cute looking, and it was just a nice <laughs> little touch. And so I'm, whenever I see her in a ponytail, I just think of her in that moon base, and I love that game so much. <laughs> it's a good one. Recommendation from me, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. It's a good time. <laughs> well, I suppose all of this video game talk is a good lead-in to our topic which is the one-year retrospective of Overwatch. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this month is the uh, the one-year anniversary of the release of Overwatch, which is super exciting, and they're doing a really cool event, which starts um, about a week from when we are recording this. No, no, sorry. It's starting in a couple of days from when we're recording this, and this will be released about a week after the uh, the start of that event. But that event lasts through June 12th, so we will be in the thick of it when this episode comes out. So just a, as a sort of uh, point of order, we're recording this before the the anniversary event has begun, so we can't really talk about it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We have nothing to say on that subject other than, oh, man, Zarya's new costume looks really, really cool. <laughs> have you seen the, the Zarya costume? Have you seen the new costumes? Yes, the- I, I have seen the costumes. Um, I l- like them all. They're, they're almost like sort of like athletic wear meets future armor. Yeah, well, and that's why I love Zarya so much. I, I, I'm pretty iffy on some of her skins, um, but I really, I really think like most people one. are. Yeah, I, I, I think just... a lot of people are like justice for Zarya, and like <laughs> they want they, they want like better skins for her. Yeah, and, and I think this new one's super good. Uh, it is good, and and I like it because it's a lot. Uh, it's very different from her other styles. 
Yeah, it's a, it's a new look for her, and I think it suits her a whole lot. Yeah, I also, um, I need to pull them up because they're really, but I guess we could um, talk about how I literally just bought this a week ago. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> I waited the whole year. <laughs> yeah, because I started playing it, um, you know, when right about when it came out. And uh, mm-hmm. I actually haven't played it a whole lot recently, but you're new to it now. So what are your initial thoughts? So I've been following it like very closely because I, I, I've, you know, been interested in it, but I've, I've never been much of a um, competitive gamer slash shooter gamer. Um, but I really love the aesthetic of it and all that. So I've been, you know, I've been in the know and watching other people play it, but I just haven't owned it. Yeah. And it's it's fun. And I like that there's um, some options for more casual gamers. Like there's the bot mode. Um, so I've been starting off with that a little more. Um, but sometimes it's a little too easy. <laughs> yeah. Especially because they, they, they'll wait. The bots will wait together before they attack a point. Mm-hmm. And I've just been going in as Junkrat and then <gasps> annihilating them all. I told you, man. Junkrat is the best. But I didn't. I, I I'm not good at him against real players though because they know not to like cluster together. Yeah, they're too smart. <laughs> I, so I you liked... can't get you can't get a pentakill with <laughs> with no. the, with his tire. <laughs> no, it's a little harder in real life. Uh, but I just I really like to just like hide and just like chuck grenades into the fracas and just like <laughs> make chaos. It's very fun. <laughs> I I've been really really satisfied with his uh his trap and his his mine his bomb yeah it's really fun to just like set little traps for people and you know finding the best spots on the maps and stuff well and his bomb even though it's i feel like it was more so designed to um disrupt the battle with since it springs them up yeah um it it also does quite a bit of damage too (laughs) you can just you know finish somebody off so uh as of now, you're a Junkrat main? Um, I, I still don't know if I have a main. I uh, I play Junkrat a lot um, when I'm playing with bots because, you know, it, he's good <laughs> in, in that, in that <laughs> it scenario. It is so fun. But, my, but the, the, the character I was most drawn to initially and that I've played the most hours on and um, I feel like I'm the best at is actually Orisa. Oh, that's so interesting. I mean, like, I've just, I've played very little of her because I just haven't played much since she was released. Yeah, she's, she's um, the newest hero. So that's um, that. And I think that's mainly why I was drawn to her because I hadn't seen too much um, gameplay with her. Yeah. Um, But I like her because she's sort of a jack of all trades kind of thing. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> there were definitely some jokes when she came out that she just, like, did everything. <laughs> she, I mean, she does. Like, uh, her, her gun is amazing. Yeah. What can I say? Like, <laughs> um, I like D.Va because she never runs out of it. You don't have to reload. But Orisa's gun is, like, ten times more accurate. So, but And it it has a lot of ammunition. <laughs> yes. Um, it so does. She's just a good, a good shot. I don't know. I just... She's good and fun. <laughs> and you can really, really troll people too, which I'm just starting to get with her little um, orb thing that she launches and it can, and it sucks people up. Yeah. <laughs> and and I remember I was I was on um, Elios mm-hmm. and there's that point that's on the edge of the map. Yeah. And um, I was fighting an Arisa as an Arisa and they had a, um, what's his name? The rollerblade guy. Oh, Lucio, my boy. Lucio. He was he was there too, and of course he's on that map because it, it yeah because of what about what happens next. <laughs> yeah, um, they just kept like constantly knocking me off. Yeah, which was I mean I'm sure it's frustrating for everybody, but for a new player who's like, that's been my my main downfall as a new player. Like I've seen the maps, I know the maps, but you don't like know the spatial like you don't have that spatial awareness yet yeah so i always back off the edge Mm -hmm. and i'm like oh i was just about to kill somebody (laughs) too cautious 
So, um, but back to the the skins. I actually really like the soldier skin. Yeah. Because he's almost like I don't know. It's it's very. Because he's he's always been sort of technology based, but now in this new skin, he's very like, um, a lot more like Genji. Yeah, I can see that. Genji's cool. <laughs> <laughs> not when you're orisa because all of those <laughs> all those bullets you shoot he just reflects back at you what you get uh so i we want to um specifically what we want to talk about today is sort of a you know this first year of overwatch has been crazy successful and so we want to discuss wh- how they did it like what what is it about overwatch what did they do to create this phenomenon um because you know, as we um talked about in uh our video game episode <laughs> that we did uh episode four like this was blizzard's first new property in about a thousand years it's <laughs> it's pretty crazy that they could you know come in here with this new uh ip and just dazzle everybody um, and actually, I think a great place to start uh, is, did you know that originally th- they were making a different game called Titan? Yeah, and I think that's like where the the spark began is the fact that they, as a company, like had the the no to cancel that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so a little about it. Um it was yeah. an MMO, a massively multiplayer online game, um where you would like have a daytime profession where you would just work in like a normal job and then you would also be a sort of a vigilante from a few different classes and you'd go and like do your cool superhero type stuff when you're not doing your profession um and it's an interesting concept for sure and you can see you know some of the stuff that came out of that 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 has landed in overwatch like tracer was very much a part of titan um there was a class called jumper which i'm pretty sure was what she sort of is derived from and there was another class called reaper so (laughs) reaper (laughs) (laughs) three guesses on that one (laughs) yeah and there was a sniper which sounds a lot like widowmaker uh, yeah. And so it was an interesting concept, but ultimately they just couldn't make it happen. And so they recycled a lot of those concepts uh, into Overwatch. And honestly, it was the best idea because they uh, they went away from, you know, the MMO scene, which is not as popular, I think, these days. Um, you know, that well, was... And also, they would have had to compete with themselves if they had made another MMO. Yeah, they, they, it was just not necessarily a smart choice to go into that genre again for a lot of reasons. Uh, you know, there's just waning mm-hmm. interest in it. They've already been there and done that, and they sort of won <laughs> won the day and then faded. Right. Like, people are sort of done. I mean, they're, of course, they're, people are going to be playing WoW until the end of time, but, like, nobody really cares about WoW anymore. They're not necessarily getting any new players um, because people are just aren't really caring about MMOs anymore. What people are playing now are MOBAs. Well, and also the whole subscription formula is is has been proven time and time again to not be the popular yeah, choice. Yeah, people don't like to subscribe um, to things. They don't want to keep paying for a game they already bought. Especially it would have been a disaster for Overwatch because <laughs> we are we we already have to pay to play online. Yep. If, well, not PC players, because, you know, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> but that was, oh, I, I, I tweeted a screen cap when I had to um, re- get PlayStation Plus, because I was like, oh, I don't want to have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because, again, I'm not much of, a, I'm not much of an online uh, gamer. Yeah, and I, play, I do play on PC. Um, but going into the MOBA scene was a really good idea. It was, it was, I think, I mean, t- leave it to Blizzard, man, to just be like, oh, yeah, this is the thing. All right, we'll do well, it perfectly. Also, <laughs> they, they're responsible for the whole genre since, you know, the, the, the biggest MOBA ever was, or the start of MOBAs was, was based on Warcraft. Dota. Yeah. Which was built on the StarCraft and Warcraft 3 engine. That is, you know, I hadn't really put that together that they sort of are the grandfather of MOBAs. 
right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's an and, interesting and for those thought. Who don't know um, the the start or the the spark really that got everybody into the MOBA genre and like the foundation of the MOBA genre as a whole um, was Dota or Defense. Uh, of the Ancients, I think. D- yes. Defenders um, of the... I don't know. I which, mean, nobody plays the, Dota anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was just a player built... Because in um, Warcraft 3, you could there was a map designer. Um, so players would design maps. <laughs> I played around on that map designer. play online with other people. <laughs> it was so much fun. I, like, I think I spent more time doing that than anything. Well, well, because because in that map designer, they captured the um, feel of um, Age of Empires. Yeah. Because Age of Empires, I used to just do build my own scenarios all day long and and like recreate movie battles and stuff. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I mean, why not dive into the genre that they're responsible for? Yeah. So that was that was maybe you know bright decision number one to um, to ditch this interesting but you know ultimately unfruitful Titan idea and recycle the good stuff and put it into what people were looking for. And I think another reason it was smart to cancel is because they probably wouldn't have been able to beat Destiny out. Yeah. Because. Destiny launched before Titan, if it was still on track, probably would have launched. Yeah. Or it would have been close. And so that's another competitor, you know? Yeah. And they're very, from the sounds of it, they would have been, because they're both, um, well, I would say Destiny's a little more far future than near future Earth. Yeah, for sure. Um, which is what the, the, the setting of Titan was going to be, is this near future Earth. Which, which is, is Overwatch. Ultimately what Overwatch is as yeah. well. But still, like, they're, they're both sci-fi shooters, so... It would have been... Yeah, there would have been some comparison. It would have been close. Yeah, for sure. Oh, for sure. But because they changed the genre and I don't know what the style exactly of Titan was going to be, but because of this um, unique style, at least in the genre... Um, you mean the visual style? Literally... Yeah, the visual style. Yeah, and I, and like I nobody compare, comparing Destiny and Overwatch. Yeah, and I, I understand that the... It, it sounds from descriptions like the visual the style of titan was going to be very similar to what overwatch ended up looking like yeah um because they um I, from what i found was that torbjorn was sort of a relic of of titan yes and T- torbjorn was one of the he was first sort of the, guys yeah he was one of the, one of the the connectors they they wanted a character that was sort of vaguely warcraft inspired yeah um he is that and, right <laughs> um but there, there's some original concept art where he looks very similar, but he's also very, like, I don't know, it's it's a little less cutesy. and a, It's still very colorful, but less cutesy. Mm. Like, his beard is a little a little more um, sleek rather than bushy. <laughs> um, so I think it would have been a little bit different, but, um, but still, like, even the bright colors differentiates it from, from Destiny, from other shooters in general, because usually they're, you know, gray. Yeah, yeah, they're they're all that grim, dark, like f- realistic Zack Snyder stuff, <laughs> so, <laughs> which I don't need in my life. <laughs> they're, it's good in moderation. Sure, I guess, <laughs> but we don't have that, so I can I can just let go of it for a while. Uh, <laughs> I think another thing that Overwatch has done to really set themselves apart is. They're, the developer team has a really fantastic communication with the fans. They are on the forums all the time, listening to what people have to say and implementing these changes based around what the community is actually feeling. And it, it's working extremely well. Jeff Kaplan and all those guys, like they're they're paying attention to what's going on and what people want, and they're implementing that in really good ways a lot of the time and that goes just such a long way into maintaining player interest in the game yeah and i think um a lot of developers they try to make something and not have as and try to have as little input from the outside as possible so that they can have their own artistic vision Uh um but i think that's one of the strengths of overwatch is that they're not afraid of that influence yeah, they're not, because they want so many developers are so precious about it. <laughs> like, <laughs> calm down, it's a video game. We just want to play it the way we like it. 
Well, especially a game that's like, it's all about what's currently happening in the game. Yeah, it's got a. It's not about like what you've already done. Yeah, it's it's a it's an ongoing story and a, an ongoing living world. Yeah, and because there's no like story that you've already beaten, <laughs> it's almost like, you know, if something changes, you're just like, oh, cool. This is the way it is. Now, now. we're gonna do that yeah. instead. Yeah. Yeah, I I I think they've they've just done really really well to listen to people, and I love. <laughs> So Jeff Kaplan, I don't know if you've you've watched any of the developer update videos from Jeff Kaplan. They're entertaining because he's such an awkward man. It's it's <laughs> it's pretty endearing, but people like to make fun of him because he is such an awkward awkward boy. Uh, have you? Someone someone has taken these videos and chopped them up and rearranged all his words to make him say different things. <laughs> Oh, and no. it's so <laughs> funny because, I mean, it's always sort of a parody. Um, so, uh, it, was, it was when um, there was a period when Bastion was just, like, really OP. And so... Oh, when he had his shield in the beta? Yeah. And, well, yeah, and it was just... No, it wasn't that. It was a more recent situation. But okay. uh, it, it was just, you know, the joke was, like, that Bastion was just running the game. And so, like, they cut together this video of Jeff Kaplan, like, explaining this. <laughs> and, like, it's just always very, very amusing because it's always these great in-jokes about what's going on in the game. Um, I, I definitely recommend checking these videos out. I can't remember the name of the YouTube user who does these, but they're brilliant. They're so funny. <laughs> um, and then th that's just a part of the whole, like community like it because of the way that the developers communicate with the fan base it really feels like more of a community than any other online game out there and i think also like the visual style and the the sort of upbeat tone of the whole game yeah. really puts players in a good mood um even if they have like a, a bad match or they're they encounter a character uh, not a character uh, a player who's kind of a grump um i feel like at the end of the day you get to look at all these cute characters and you're just like oh well i, I had fun most of the time so yeah it keeps I'm you in a good mood and i want to share that good mood with everybody else who's playing yeah it keeps a good atmosphere for sure i it's just a happy time it's a good fun happy time and it and it because it just doesn't take itself too seriously yeah mm -hmm. and I, I think also that some of the game mechanics uh help with that too like five second respawn timer yeah like that is so refreshing whereas a lot of other uh, mobas like it's um an exponentially increasing respawn timer so punishing as the game gets longer <laughs> your respawn timer gets longer and it's so frustrating it, it was really interesting um recently i went back and played a little bit of team fortress 2 and that was a yeah. really interesting comparison <laughs> <laughs> to go back and play honestly you know arguably the most similar game out there to to overwatch in in terms of yeah. gameplay and and even tone and even some character, character design, design and tone too. like i'd say that you yeah. know there's 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 a lot of reasons to compare the two but when you play they just feel so different yeah another way that i feel like well on the topic of the the developers listening, I feel like they, from the out, you, you know, from the beginning, at least from the beginning of Overwatch, not necessarily Titan, um, they've really wanted to include everybody. Yes. You know, the, the the first characters we got, I don't, I don't remember exactly the original lineup, but you know, we've been getting characters from different countries who speak different languages. Yes. A, they hire voice actors who I'm assuming fluently speak a, a different language that fits the origins of the character they're, they're, they're voicing because I'm 100% convinced when they, when they have those voice lines. Yeah, they do. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know about all of the voice actors. I happen to know that like the voice actors for Symmetra is Indian. Um, and so, yeah, they're, they're absolutely being very conscious about their casting and about sort of their their representation in the cast and it's such a beautiful thing and it's it like 
it's interesting how these like red flags have gone up a few times where people are like, oh no, they're doing a bad thing. But so far it's always come out that no, they're, they're not. <laughs> like um, some time ago, Farah got some skins that were um, very much inspired by tribal designs from like the Pacific Northwest area. Um, perhaps, um, you know, Pacific Northwest of the United States or even Canada. And people got, Mm -hmm. some people got upset because they were like, what, do you think that just because she's brown, she can just wear the costume of any culture that is also brown? Because she's um, most sort of visibly, notably, she's Egyptian. Mm -hmm. Uh, But here she is in these Native American costumes. And people are like, why is she allowed to do that? But there have been hints along the way that um, Farah's father is probably Native American or First Nations. Um, and honestly, like, like I don't know. I, I understand being defensive and worried, but, like, maybe give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Like, w- we we didn't know that her she wasn't of mixed parentage. We didn't know. So, so, like, to me, when I first saw that, that was a clue. I was like, oh, she's in Native American costume? I know that her mom is Egyptian. Is her dad Native American? Like, that, that's what occurred to me. And it seems to be the case because in that Christmas co- uh, comic, she was in Canada having dinner with an older gentleman uh, who looked like he might be Native American. And so it's like, yeah, I think I think her dad is Canadian First Nations. <laughs> so there we go. Like, I think I think some of that that reaction comes from. um the white community sort of getting scared. not understanding <laughs> well getting scared but also we we have no comprehension of what it's like to be mixed yeah so you know we don't have that struggle with two completely dip, different but in in the case of potentially Farah intersecting identities yeah well, you know what? That's so, a good point. I, 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 she might feel so, so complicated about it, but she can still sort of experience both those worlds. As a sort of um, less complicated uh, example is with um, Roadhog's uh, tribal costume. Because people were like, what? What? This is appropriation. But there are certain clues that Roadhog is actually probably Maori. <laughs> Um, yeah. his, his name mm-hmm. is what Mako is his first name, which means shark yeah. in Maori, which is also the name of that skin. And he, yeah, and he uses um, New Zealand slang. People just sort of assumed because of the whole Mad Max thing, and because Junkrat's pretty mm-hmm. obviously white, that probably that Roadhog must be. But I think that was just a case of people, you know, you don't see his face, and then they just assume he's white, which is troubling in its own way but yeah turns out i mean his name is mako and he he uses new zealand slang so he's probably new zealander he's he's almost certainly maori and that costume does belong to him so like that one's pretty cut and dry yeah he this is fine (laughs) yeah i think it gets a little you could probably start to talk about it with like the um some of the events they have like they had the was it like the fortune event where it was sort of Chinese oh, New Oh, it was inspired. the it was the year of the rooster, Chinese New Year. Yeah. yeah. I loved that and I loved um, some of those skins, man. I got I just have to t- talk for a minute about some of those legendary skins, particularly the um, Journey to the West inspired stuff because I am kind of obsessed with that story. And so to have Zenyatta with the Sansung <laughs> costume uh winston was wukong my boy uh roadhog was baje and reinhardt was wujing um was super super exciting because i i think and i think that they did it in a in a respectful way because i i think that you know especially in the case of like reinhardt uh and roadhog they were not like dressing them up to you know sort of mimic some other culture that they didn't belong to. It mm-hmm. was just sort of like, yeah, you know, this literary character, we're going to associate him with that. Mm-hmm. I, I just, Bajia, <laughs> Roadhog as Bajia is my favorite thing because I love Bajia. And in Journey to the West, he fights with this big rake. And so they turned Roadhog's hook into 
a rake. I lost my mind at that. It was the most exciting <laughs> thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> and man, Sansung Zenyatta is handsome. He's a handsome boy. <laughs> <laughs> but I, yeah, I thought that event was super cool. Yeah, speaking of other sort of or uh, controversies. Mm-hmm. Um, another sort of controversy that arose was, um, I believe it was Anita Sarkeesian who um, sort of made it sort of pretty well known or or talked about um, that there was very little diversity of the women characters' body types fair on point. initial release. Yeah, fair point. You've got the sort of big buff um, Zarya, um, and then May is sort of a question mark. Actually- they, they, well, they they sort of released Zarya almost right after that whole thing happened. Um, I, I, they, they probably had her pretty much done anyway. Yeah. Um, because you can't just make a character like that <laughs> so quickly. Um, but she is a perfect example of diversifying women's body types in video games because yeah, there's a there was a quote or a little uh, anecdote I found that Chris Metzen explained uh, his daughter asked him why all the female characters from Warcraft seem to be only wearing swimsuits. <laughs> um, and that could sort of be applied to the first couple months of uh, Overwatch. Yeah, um, I mean, their designs where... were certainly tasteful, but but not yes. super diverse in but body. They were, they were all, they were, yeah. I mean, Farrah's pretty pretty strong looking, but that's a yeah, lot of armor, yeah, too. Yeah, she's got her, her big Samus suit, so it's hard to say what's going on. Yeah. Um, and the same with May yeah. and her big snowsuit. Well, actually, um, I saw, it was months ago, and I don't have a link or any sort of, you know, 100% recollection, but I think I saw somebody posting about how, oh, May's in a big puffy swimsuit or a snowsuit and she's just really thin underneath. And then they posted like a little concept picture of how that would work. And then I think it was one of the um, developers was like, no. <laughs> she's chubby. <laughs> that's not right. Yeah, she's chubby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's been a whole thing with, you know, is May chubby? Is she not chubby? Um, I like chubby May. She's super cute. <laughs> right? And I think people appreciate that because, you know, you can be a badass and chubby. Yeah, she's a badass and she's a genius and she's chubby and cute. Like, I love I think her. a lot of players really like her, too, from what I've seen. <laughs> they like her um, and they hate her. <laughs> I mean, you know, she's a vexing <laughs> character sometimes because that she ice can wall. take a lot of damage, too. Yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, she's got her cocoon and then that ice wall can sometimes be really inconvenient yeah depending on the may player <laughs> um but no she's beloved yep. if vexing <laughs> <laughs> but honestly i don't think there's a single character it, we, maybe i don't know i'd say almost entirely across the board every character is beloved um i think there are a couple that are right? less so like I mean, I don't really love Reaper, but I think he has a really compelling story. Yeah, I mean, and there are certainly people who really do love him. Like, there, there is a character yeah. for everybody, and I think that's what's so great about the mm-hmm. cast of Overwatch is there's someone yeah, for everyone. There's a character for everybody, play, play, gameplay wise, because everybody there's so many different types of characters to play as. But then also, you know, we connect with a character that might be like us in certain ways, or we connect with a character, and be like, oh my goodness, I admire this character. This character. I admire this character, what they've been through. That's you know? me with Lucio. He's my boy. <laughs> oh my God. I love him so much. I mean, first of all, he's just a sweet, darling, soft boy. Uh, and he also is like, just so good. Like, do you know anything about his story? I don't know too much. No. He's like a resistance, like revolution boy um, from South America. <laughs> I think he's Brazilian. And even though he doesn't have an accent, he that's one thing that weirds me out about him. Everybody's got their accents, but Lucio sounds like he's from America. He's not from well, America. He, 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 he's like um, sort of like a pop culture figure too, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's so that his could, thing. Is could he be was a little a... bit of an explanation? Yeah, a DJ, but, right? Yeah, yeah. He was a DJ, yeah. sort of, yeah, dead mouse type, like like electronic DJ, and he mm-hmm. noticed a lot of, like, corruption and bad stuff going on in his community in Brazil, and so he used his position and his music in order to fight against that, uh, which is just so great, and his whole thing was like, yeah, I'm gonna use music to bring people together and inspire them to, like, 
fight and resist. And that's so cool and so good. And he's just such a wonderful boy. <laughs> and he's so fun. <laughs> and he can be played like a maniac. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I yeah. don't know if you know about uh, DSP Stanky. Do you know DSP Stanky? I don't know the name, but I've, I'm sure I've seen a video or something. He plays Lucio like no one else. It's crazy the kind of stuff he does. He's so fast and he switches between modes a lot, so he's really hard to track. Like, you can't hit him because he's speeding up and he's slowing down and he's everywhere oh, and he's yeah. on the walls and he knows all the left. You gotta check out some of DSP Stanky's videos. There are some really, really funny ones. I may link to one in the show notes just because it is the funniest, craziest thing I've ever seen. The way this guy is there plays one with Lucio. him like pushing people into that big pit? Yeah, he just boops them all off the edge. Like he gets, <laughs> like he like kills the whole team. At one, like he's just like boop 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 bye guys like it's insane the way that he plays this character i love him he's he's my hero he's so so cool and the videos are just really really funny because like he first put out the video and people were like wow wow oh wait i he's a console player never mind <laughs> because there's that whole reputation of like oh well it's yeah. easier on console and so he's like hmm oh really guys okay fine I'll play it on PC then. And so he made this, like, <laughs> vengeance video of him just wrecking everybody on PC. And it's the funniest thing I've ever seen. And, like, that's Overwatch, man. Like, people getting into it, like, getting involved. Like, this, it's so fun and cool to see what people get out there and do. Well, and I think, I, I'm I'm not 100% sure of this, but but I think you can, you can connect your console and PC accounts. Mm. So you can... You can switch between them, and that's really uncommon in online games. That is. <laughs> and honestly, like, why? It seems like a no-brainer. Right? <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah, Blizzard, you you done right. You done right. Right. <laughs> I mean, they're all about connecting. They're all about like their um, their little uh, software that you know lets connects all their games up. Whatever it's called, uh, BattleNet or whatever. Yeah, Battle.net. Yeah. Um, uh, th another thing that I that I think is really uncommon for a lot of games, and they've been sort of doing a really good job of, is showing us different aged characters. Anna and Anna is and Reinhardt and Soldier and Soldier. Yeah, whoever the, he's like the daddy of daddies. He's the grandpa. Uh, <laughs> he's so great. Yeah. Well, it's great because you've got that OG team. Um, and, and it's so cool to see because, you know, the, the OG Overwatch crew, the sort of way that they've presented that experience in the story, the way that it's taken a toll on each of them and, like, their different sort of outlooks on things from that experience is really, really cool because, yeah, there is this whole big, like, thing that they're a part of and they're the, they're the progenitors of it. Well, and Anna is, like, Probably one of the, I don't know, you, you so rarely see older women portrayed, except for as like, you know, Link's crazy, grandma. <laughs> crazy, crazy wizened women who are usually witches and yeah, they're like, it, they don't do a lot. They sort of just give you a quest or they give you a magic. Yeah, there, there's some nice grandma or some evil grandma, but, <laughs> but they're generally. But this grandma is like. She's doing it she's for herself. A, she's such. <laughs> A, in my eyes, the probably the most unique of all their archetypes. Oh yeah, well, a healer just, that's a sniper. That's never. That's not a thing. Who did? That's not a thing. <laughs> who ever thought of that? Like I love it. It's brilliant and cool, and she's brilliant and cool, and she's a mom. She's a mom. <laughs> right. I love that. <laughs> and her daughter's a. I bad. really wish I was. I really wish I was better at her. Um, I just <laughs> yeah. can't. The, the the healing side of her is really forgiving, like with her her little healing balm, and then also, um, uh, at least on console, I feel like the when you're targeting your teammates, it seeks them a little bit, or like there's a bigger hitbox when you're healing. Yeah. Um, which is good <laughs> for me, <laughs> uh, but I'm still not the best sniper. Um, I'm definitely not like the sneakiest sniper. I'll like shoot three times, and they'll they'll know where I'm at. And <laughs> not not much of a Widowmaker player then. <laughs> I mean, 
I, my one of my proudest moments actually was I got Widowmaker's uh, trophy, the the one where you kill five players with a uh, her venom trap in one mm-hmm. game. So I'm really good with the venom trap, but <laughs> I'm not. I don't know. She. I think her sniper rifle is more powerful than Anna's, so it's a little easier to get one shot kills. Um, yeah. I'm not yeah. great at headshots yet. I'm still working on the whole aiming thing with the the joysticks. Um, yeah, that's. I can't but, see. That's that's one uh, reason I play it on PC. Is I can't. I just can't do yeah. FPSs on console. I can't use a controller. I gotta use a mouse. As long as I'm not like switching between them to feel the difference, I'm usually okay. Um, yeah, honestly, but I, it is it is a little tough. There is a bit of an aim assist. It's not so much when you're sniping though. Yeah, because I grew up playing Halo on Xbox, and I was yeah. like, oh, I can't. I'm so bad at this. <laughs> uh, and then I and then I tried when Team Fortress Two came out, and I tried it on PC, and I was like, Oh, okay, <laughs> this is all right. <laughs> I also have a special place in my heart for Anna because besides the Origins pack uh, legendary skins that you get. Um, she was my first legendary skin that I got from a box, from loot box. Aww. I got her, um, I think it's the Horus skin, where it's oh, sort of yeah. her when she's younger. Yeah, that one's cool. Yeah. But the, she has a lot of really cool skins that I want to get. She just has a really cool, like, <laughs> silhouette. She's, she's just so cool. She's just the coolest mom. <laughs> I do I do like her, her original skin, I think, Slightly better than the uh, the her younger self because I love that eye patch. She's a badass with an eye patch. Yeah, and it, <laughs> I mean, and it's cool. Like I, I also really love um, Soldier's young skin. Yeah, like mm-hmm. that's just cool. He's got some goofy ass skins, but <laughs> 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 the evil can evil stuff. That's weird. But uh, but I I I definitely really like his his young man skin. Just seeing him, you know, back in his heyday. Uh, yeah. But but Anna, I I think I I prefer older. Um, just because it's cool that she, you know, it's like you. We've got a thousand and two gray haired grizzled video game male protagonists, but like an old Egyptian woman. <laughs> it's very unusual. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's very she's, unusual. She's... A, a stylish, old, badass Egyptian woman yeah. who is just... Oh, she's the coolest. Uh, I, I wish she was my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I think another really cool um, inclusion is uh, they've come out and said that Symmetra is autistic. Yeah, that was in a comic. Yes, that's just all of these kinds of things that they're doing. They just, they're just like, we want everybody to play and everybody to love the characters and like learn from them about each other in the real world. Identify and feel like connected. And it's like, you know, I mean, that's the cool and crazy thing because so much of video game culture right now is pushing back against yeah. all of this inclusion. And, you know, people are like, uh, I don't like it. Uh, uh, uh. And so, you know, white boys being white boys. And they, and no no they, offense they to that. present like white boy. 10 hours but... of Overwatch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. No <laughs> they offense say, to... They say, like, you know, Gamergate bullshit. And then they're like, okay, I'm going to go, you know, play Overwatch where it's like, it's probably one of the most inclusive, popular games it's out there. insanely popular, and I think it has a lot to... I mean, it's just a good game to begin with, but I don't think that it would have had this longevity if it were not for this inclusivity and people really identifying with it. And it's like, yeah, you know what? There is an issue w- with characters just being, like, kind of shoveled in, like, mm, here's a black person. And it's like, that's not really... it. You know, it's like, that's... That's tokenism, and that's not good. Yeah. That, nope, that's not what anyone's asking for. People aren't asking for things to be shoehorned in, or God forbid, to use a terrible phrase shoved down our throats. Uh, just make good characters that are different people from different places, for God's sake. And it works. It works, and everybody loves this game. Like no one well, and... dislikes this about this game. Yeah, and the male characters, like it, it's a, it's slightly less. Um feeding into um sort of the oppressiveness of the patriarchy when there are you know i don't know how i'm gonna word this (laughs) take your time figure it out basically basically it's it's more important for us to see diverse bodied female characters to sort of combat the 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 you know 
the status quo. Mm. But it's also really important for us to see the diverse bodies of the male characters too. And also know their stories and their backstories. Like, yeah. Roadhog is probably the most popular character, if we're being honest. And he's a big old Maori guy. Like, that's so cool. Yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I hope that they do present more of that side of his character. Like, I get that it's not yeah. about that. And there's other stuff going on. And, you know, this is not exactly a story-driven game. So I get why they haven't necessarily gotten around to that or, you know, to... Farah's paternity, like, you know, there's, it's, it's not necessarily, there's not necessarily a whole lot of room for that in a game like yeah. this, but I think that it would be nice to be given a little bit more of that, if only to have some really solid confirmation, like, yeah, no, he's a Maori guy, he's from New Zealand and he's Maori, yes, her dad is Canadian and he's First Nations, like, just to, just to have a little bit of a button on it, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and I'm sure they'll get there. But I, again, it, it feeds into the longevity that I'm sure they really want. You know, they want to um, not necessarily keep us guessing, but they want to, you know, they want to develop these characters over time. They don't want us to just be like, okay, I know everything about this character, you know. Yeah, it's already here. I've got this whole biography, so I'm done. <laughs> I know it now. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I haven't read all the comics, but I really hope they also um, deal a lot with or in the future, if they don't, um, I really want to see more discussion about loss of limbs because a lot of the characters are missing limbs. That's an interesting point. And I think if they, if I think it would be really powerful, especially for young kids, especially for young kids that, you know, might be missing a limb or might have a prosthetic arm yeah. to see these awesome characters just being awesome and having missing limbs. Like Torborn has a big metal claw. Yeah. Yeah. Anna's <laughs> missing an eye. Like Junkrat's missing a leg and maybe more. <laughs> yeah, who knows? <laughs> who knows? And I think I think that's really, you know, important for everyone to see, you know, people with different different abilities types of bodies. and different <laughs> Yeah, exactly. They're still being able to do the stuff that they do and and being no less capable for those differences and i think it they really need to acknowledge that from a story perspective um that these are hard lives to live because a lot of the times especially in sci-fi you see characters with you know uh robotic appendages and all that but they never talk about them so it's just sort of a style choice rather than a story choice yeah yeah i can see that um so I, th I would really ap appreciate it if they you know made it intentional yeah i think just uh for our first sidebar maybe of the episode we've just been talking so much about overwatch um like uh the how to train your <laughs> dragon franchise you know that it was a it was yes. a central part of the story that toothless had lost a part of his body and then hiccup lost a part of his body and now they're sort of yeah. experiencing that life together and they're able to support each other in that shared experience yeah mm-hmm so yeah, to to include some of that, I mean, because there, yeah, there's room. There's there's out, outside of the the confines of the game proper. There's absolutely room to tell those stories. Because we always see Junkrat, especially as like this crazy, you know, explosive garbage man. You know, but imagine, <laughs> yeah, imagine seeing a really touching comic where you know, of course, he's going to show himself. And maybe he's like, I don't know, robbing a bank or something. But then in his downtime, I'm sure he has a lot to deal with, you know? Yeah, he's, that takes a toll on your life. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that would be, you know, great for players to see. I agree. I agree. I, I, and that's... It'll only make us love him more. <laughs> bottom line, like, that's what's so great about this game is it just... they. We keep wanting more, and they keep delivering, and we keep wanting more. Yeah. Like, they're just keeping it coming. Mm -hmm. They're keeping it up. And, and it's honestly remarkable, especially given Blizzard's track record, because they've, you know, they've kind of put their foot in it a couple of times. Um, <laughs> <coughs> Diablo. <coughs> Diablo 3. Uh, so, like, I, I, I'm impressed that they have done this thing like I, you know I've, I've i've had a mixed relationship with 
with Blizzard in the past, but I really appreciate what they've been able to do here. I think the way they handle their any controversies that do come up, the way they handle it, it, it really shows you how the people sort of, I don't know, how like the sort of traditional view of a gamer would be, they're like, oh, it doesn't need to be changed, you know, it's fine the way it is how quiet they get after it's been fixed yeah so like the whole tracer thing where you know she came out or they you know showed her as out through the comic book over christmas yeah um that we talked about in our other ep- or previous episode they were like causing a stink as it was happening but now they're like you don't hear them talking about it anymore yeah because like who you know? actually cares like <laughs> the only people who quit care what? are the people who it's meaningful to like People who care are, like, yeah. you know, le- young lesbians who say, like, oh, wow, my favorite video game character is a lesbian, too. That means a lot to me. And everyone else is like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yep, sounds, sounds yeah, fine. Whatever. They might be, you know, a little whiny at first. They might be a little whiny at first because they're like, oh, well, I guess I, you know, can't have an imaginary date with her or whatever. I mean, obviously, <sighs> that's not what all gamers are thinking, but... <laughs> but that's what some of those ones were thinking. It's like, just, we're not talking about all gamers. Yeah. We're talking about the people it, who caused a stink yeah. <laughs> when they decided to reveal Tracer being gay. And then you can, you're, you're a certain kind of person if you decide to cause a stink about something as trivial to you as that. Especially because it's not like there was a previous version of Tracer where... They've changed She something. was having... Yeah. Yeah, it's not like she was having... You know, it's not like she was flirting with a, a male character. No, you know? she didn't have any kind of a relationship. And if anything, like, people were already shipping her as gay anyway. Because, frankly, <laughs> all of the biggest Overwatch fans ship all of the characters as gay. So, <laughs> so yeah. like, people were already and... shipping her with, like, mm-hmm. a Widowmaker. So I was like, oh, okay, she has a girlfriend. Well, rats to my ship (laughs) but (laughs) dang oh well they still ship it (laughs) um well maybe maybe i mean i think you mentioned uh in the last episode that a lot of them ship her and widowmaker well maybe they'll like i don't know finally start getting along and then widowmaker will come hang out and they'll be the thruple a lesbian (laughs) thruple yeah sure why not let's get this let's get this lesbian poly party going yeah, I mean, I don't know how likely that is, considering um, Widowmaker is still very much a bad guy. But who knows? Anything can change. <laughs> All right, <laughs> who, outside of gameplay, just as a, as a, like a, a fun little uh, last question, who's okay? Who's your favorite character so far? Just as oh a oh my character. goodness, Look, I gotta pull up the roster. I yeah, gotta pull up a the roster. Them. And it's and it's so easy too. I was talking to Dylan, um, who you our, our audience may know from episode four. Uh, I was talking to him like, so who who is your favorite character not to play just you know as a character? And he's like, well, that's a really hard question for me because I find that I get to know a character by playing them, and I come to love them because of that. So for him, it it often goes that direction. Um, he he mm-hmm. comes to love them because he gets to know them. Yeah. Um, based on, like, some of the story stuff, I'm really, really, I really like Sombra. She's an interesting one. She has a really, really, you know, a powerful story to me. Um, I also love her the aesthetics of her character, too. I'm sad that um, you Especially her. Playing... Um, I have played her. I'm still trying to get the hang of it. No, sorry. I, I, I'm, uh, I'm sad that you weren't playing the game when she was being released oh okay because that was oh, a whole well, I was fun still, like, like arg thing going on i was still paying attention when they were like doing all the teasing oh, and they're like, who is sombra who is sombra and i was like oh my gosh i'm hooked even though i'm not playing because yeah, there was that whole thing where like there was like a phone number that some that people found and like you called it and it was like the it it was a recorded message for the like um lumericorp like energy company and then you like mm-hmm managed to access this like secret message from sombra and it was really crazy like it's a little bit of a bummer that they like went so all out for sombra's release and then like for anna and for orisa um they didn't they didn't really do anything they were just like here's the new character Yeah, orisa sort of of came out of the blue 
Yeah, um, it was a very rapid release for her. Yeah. But I, I really love Sombra's um, Day of the Dead skin. Yeah, it's so cute. It, it's, it's cool. I, she also has one. It's like a cyberpunk sort of skin, too. It's just like crazy awesome. I don't know. I just love <laughs> her, like, her, like, undercut and everything. <laughs> She better be queer, okay? Like, look at her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta say though, man, when I like, when they when they announced that um, Tracer was gay, I was like, yeah, have you seen her? Like, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> like, sorry, but like to me, she reads as really gay in the first place. Like, especially that aviator <laughs> costume especially that aviator costume. I love it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, where have you guys been? Obviously she's gay. <laughs> like, I know. I know. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. But Oh, I just had a really wonderful thought. Yeah? Um. So, as of yet, we don't have a trans character, which I think... As far as we know. <laughs> as far as we know, yes. Um... If they do that, they need to approach it very carefully. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just had a really great thought because they just released Chelsea Manning from jail. Oh, yeah. We need, like, I don't know, a character like Chelsea Manning. I don't know. Have you seen her selfie? Her first selfie of freedom? Yes. It's sweet. Oh, my God. She looks so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I thought of that because she almost has Tracer's same haircut. You're right. <laughs> That's adorable. <laughs> Anyway, that was just a random thought. <laughs> I think, honestly, it's kind of interesting. It, I know this is going to sound crazy, um, but when Tracer, when, like, the game was new, I I kind of didn't care for Tracer that much. Um, I She kind of got on my nerves a little. Um, I, I felt like she was maybe played a little too broadly like she was just so very cockney um but as time has gone on she really has won a spot in my heart and she's just such a cutie she might now be my favorite character as a as just a character in the game and i think that's proof of the method they are doing for releasing story yeah um because at first she just seems like this always peppy always you know she was the pikachu on of the, the game <laughs> exactly and without pokemon the first movie <laughs> pikachu has like you know we need that we need that 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 story to start to feel <laughs> i can't believe that you're acknowledging pikachu's depth of character <laughs> well i mean because if you look at in the past seasons of the tv show pikachu has no character development you know pikachu's been the same since then and we don't really talk about it. But the reason we're so fond of Pikachu is because of episode one where Pikachu saves Ash. And then also in Pokemon, the first movie where Pikachu saves Ash. Yeah, well, I'm going <sighs> to reference the the episode where Pikachu is going to um, stay with the other Pikachus. And then he decides he loves Ash and he doesn't. Okay, yeah, there's, there's, there, there's a couple moments, but they're very sparse these days. Yeah, yeah, certainly I'd say <laughs> just to carry on this sidebar. Yeah, yeah, in that in that first uh the first anime, like he he had a lot of really like good emotional stuff, like the the um gym battle with um with Surge and his whole like struggle about whether or not he wants to evolve into a Raichu in order to win. And it's like there's yeah. like they're giving him depth in a way that yeah, I can see they're not I haven't watched much of the new stuff, but I can imagine. I don't not. keep up with it either, but it's Pikachu is just you know uh, there. <laughs> it's just peeking around. Yeah, right. I can see that happening. Just sort of, they're just not really trying anymore. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like I, I don't know. The, yeah, there was something about Tracer that didn't just didn't work for me right away. But now I can sort of, I can see sort of who she is and what they're what they're doing with her and well, even I, now they're still doing more with her with the last event the, yeah the, first like mission. Tracer's first mission that's so cute baby's first mission <laughs> another one of my characters that i've always liked since i heard about 
or like started paying attention is Zenyatta. I just love yes. his 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 style. I love his concept. I love his voice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's he's really really red. Yeah, and I'm really fascinated by the whole Omnic thing. Right? Like, because it's very like very th that's sort of like the whole near future dilemma for almost all of sci-fi is um the otherness of of robots or yeah. sort of robot like artificial intelligences um, yeah 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 what it yeah what what constitutes personhood yeah yeah I, I, and i love i love that they sort of take on the sort of the guise of tibetan monks Mm hmm which is just all the more why i was super duper duper excited for <laughs> for zinyata <laughs> to be sansung because because like <laughs> it's perfect <laughs> it's so <laughs> perfect uh yeah uh I, I love that um that the video the teaser video with um widow maker trying to assassinate yeah that mm -hmm. like not Zenyatta <laughs> guy, the Omnic uh, spiritual leader. Yeah, I, think. I, I, I can't I think of what he's called, but, anything, but, but yeah. yeah. And so, and so there was a little cool, in that know. that I was like, okay, Tracer, like I'm kind of, I'm kind of getting you here, but I don't mm -hmm. know yet. But uh, yeah, that's a really, I just, I love those videos. Like, what a good idea that was to release those cool little movies. Yeah. Like the mm, the Hanzo and Genji one. <laughs> oh, that one's spectacular. It's beautiful. Yeah, I really like the the Sombra one, and I don't. Yeah. What was what's the more more the more recent one? I think is. Oh, I don't remember. Was there one since the Sombra one? I I can't remember. Uh. I don't know. Do you have a a prediction or uh, what you might want to see in the next hero that they might release? Yeah, that's interesting. I wish that I had sort of contemplated that before. I'm now. Sort of excited for because I I don't know if they will just because of the sort of role he plays or the the the, the name plays in the the lore. But I I think I really like the idea of Doomfist, <laughs> especially because um, Terry Crews has expressed he wants to be the voice of Doomfist. <laughs> oh, Terry. I I. I wrote a really dumb tweet this morning um, oh yeah on the topic of overwatch um there was a really intense episode of rupaul's drag race on friday night <laughs> and and for some reason i was just like i tweeted blizzard i was like if you really want to um uh show your appreciation for queer gamers you need to have a rupaul's drag race game mode in overwatch <laughs> Because I saw the new skins and people were like, yes, to the new skins. And I'm like, there should just be like, a, I don't know, <laughs> some a something. I don't know, some some way to like show off your, I don't know. It, you can't really customize them, but you can, you know, choose your skin and that's kind of fun. So I don't know. It's just a random <laughs> thought. That's cute. Also, RuPaul would be hilarious if he voiced a character in Overwatch. Yep, that's it. The new new <laughs> champion is going to be... The new, the new Overwatch character is going to be... Supermodel of the world. Supermodel of the world. Ru RuPaul. Not even like a character based on RuPaul. It's just going to be RuPaul. Just literally RuPaul. Just actually like, RuPaul. Still, still alive in this future and yes. just... Yes. <laughs> like some kind of like cybernetic RuPaul. That's it. Oh, That's... oh gosh. And the voice line for... Uh, her ultimate would be if you can't love yourself, I don't know, yeah, something so, like that. Yeah, yeah. There, there's, there's one of her room one of her quotes. Here. Yeah, there's yeah. <laughs> there's room to play there. I think there's a I think there's a I'm lot just, there. I'm imagining her sort of in a um, oh I don't remember that video game, the witch with guns in her all of her hair. Oh, Bayonetta. Bayonetta. Yes, um, yes. You know how she how she does like that that foot stomp in uh, Smash Brothers <laughs> with that giant foot. I'm imagining RuPaul doing that as an ultimate and saying, if you can't love yourself, how are you going to love somebody else? Can I get an amen? And just everybody dying. Yeah. Oh, we've done it. That's it. That's the next Overwatch <laughs> character. That's what it has to be. Oh, I love it. Well, I don't know about you. So I, I, don't, I don't know about you, but I think that uh, I think that's a good note to end on. <laughs> 
<laughs> we can't go anywhere from here. I mean, I, I think no. this is the logical <laughs> conclusion. That does it for today's episode. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to us on YouTube if you absolutely love us, and like the video if you only like us. Also, we are now on Twitter. Um, so go ahead and, and follow us on there at Lit Merit Pod. So capital L, capital M, capital P. If that matters. <laughs> if that matters. If that matters. If, we're, not, we're not 100% sure. <laughs> and thanks to Jonathan Colton for the use of our theme song, Fraud, from his album, Artificial Heart. Until next time, remember, no, no guilty, guilty pleasures. pleasures.